So, let's see. No. So today what we're going to do is we're going to look at the audio codec FSM in detail. So this is week 7, lecture 2. So this is check, and we'll finish this off tomorrow. So hopefully after tomorrow, you have a good idea on how to implement this. Or even after today, I don't know, checkpoint 1. Um, audio codec controller. Okay. So basically, your audio codec controller, recall that it consists of, uh, so recall, I'm just going to write out the VHDL entity, entity audio codec controller, actually, instead of writing it out, I mean, just, just realized it, just copy paste it, it's audio codec controller. Here it is. So this is what it kind of looks like. And I've already, uh, 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 let's see, take out this comment. Here. I've already discussed how at the top level your mm, tri-state buffer is inferred, yes? Okay, so that's this control bit here. So this is for tri-state buffer control at top level. And if you want that as well, so here, let me just put that together. So the top level is called Neuron Project. So the top level here. So if you copy, let's copy this. This is the instance at the top level. Okay. So top level. You can see that what comes in is the 50 megahertz clock from the buffer, yes? That's stepped down to 50 kilohertz internally. What Colin does is Colin Stapleton sends out a 50 kilohertz clock and you can signal tap that just to be sure, right? There's a reset coming in. Notice this is the global reset. The delayed reset is used in checkpoint two, okay? I squared C clock, uh, I squared C data and the control bit, yes? So if you go back to the top level, So here is how do you infer the tri-state? So right there. Okay. Let me move actually this. Here, so here's the top level, yes. So you send, this is a signal declared at the top level. So it's I squared C data. When your data control is one, yes, and that's, uh, so this data control here, let's see, the data control right here comes from your, is an output of your audio codec controller right there. Okay? So when it's active, and we'll see how the control FSM inside this audio controller, audio codec controller, the I squared C controller, controls this line, okay? So when it's one, the data is sent out, else that is when it is zero, it's high impedance, okay? So for example, in the receive acknowledge state inside the audio codec controller, what will the bit I squared C data control be set to? Oh, sorry? No, not to Z. The I squared C data control bit, what will that be set to? Not one. Zero, right? So when it's zero, this line will be high impedance, yes? So it will be waiting 
to uh, what's the word receive uh, the acknowledgement and the way Colin has done this you don't have to do it this way he doesn't really service the acknowledgement if you notice right so what comes out of the um, audio codec controller is just the data okay you see that this I squared C data is an output he doesn't really have an input so I if you want you should have another port here which is an input and in the acknowledge state your I squared C audio codec controller looks at that bit to see if you actually get the acknowledge is that clear so Colin's not doing that you could do that but I didn't I don't make it a it's not compulsory right so all he does is he just manipulates the control bit uh, the control bit of the uh, tri-state buffer, okay? Now, just to be complete, if you will, these ports here are basically, they're defined in your, when you import the pin assignments, they're defined. If you go to the top level, you just got to be careful that your data line is declared as in-out, Okay? So in other words, let me just copy this. So at the top level, hmm? no, it doesn't make it a type buffer. Since it's at the top level, it's a very good question. So let me just. text let me make the font size smaller so it'll actually fit on this page okay there actually let's see mm -hmm. oh boy this is why I need that keyboard uh, let's see yeah there okay so these are the signals of interest in checkpoint one, okay. So this is checkpoint one. Checkpoint one. A question was asked: making this in out this line does it infer a buffer? No. This is at the top level, okay. So the synthesizer knows that it's basically going to be serviced by a tri-state buffer from your end, okay. Is that clear? So. What we are now going to cover is how do we manipulate, for example, this control line, all right, this clock and data via the FSM. And to do that, so here is a description. So here is a description. In words, I'm not going to draw out the state diagram because I want you to do it. Let's see. So description of the I squared C control FSM, finite state machine, right? Recall that we already discussed you need a 50 kilohertz down converter from the 50 kilohertz clock divider from the 50 megahertz clock buffer input. You also need a ROM controller, yes? Those are the components of your data path, right? This is your control. So let me write it out in English. I'm going to use Colin Stapleton's description because it's a pretty good description. Okay. Well, instead of me writing it out, let me see. Uh, no, it's not in there. Okay, so let me just write it out. Uh, the audio codec controller initializes the Wolfson audio codec via I squared C by sending 10 data packets, okay, registers 0 through 9, yes, 
uh, each data packet is how many bits wide? Huh? How many bits is each data packet? 24. Excellent. It's 24 bits. Okay. So it's 0x34. Yes. Followed by the register address and the data. Okay. It's 24 bits consisting of the consisting of the codec address, okay, the control register, and the control register address, and the control register settings. settings and again if you go online to the digital systems website uh, so here so under the digital systems website yes if you go to 2902 course project okay this document here i squared c initialization data which i already opened has register 0 through register 9 okay what are what is the recommended data to send yes Okay, so this is eight. Uh, so this is the eight bits. I mean, totally twenty-four bits. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six hex digits. Okay, and this is the data packet you're going to send out in big Indian form. But remember that for your audio codec, okay, one. So if you go to the software interface, you have the acknowledge bit as well. Yes. So here, you're going to send read address, read address, acknowledge. So this is eight bits here, plus one acknowledge, nine bits. Okay, eight bits plus one acknowledge, nine bits. Is that clear? So totally, you're going to be servicing how many bits? How many bits are you going to be servicing, including the acknowledge? Totally. How many bits are you sending? 24, right? Plus three acknowledge bits. How many is that? 27 bits. You're going to be servicing 27 bits. Right. So anyway, again, what I recommend you do is you look at this configuration, for example, register four, okay? Just go into the Wolfson audio codec data sheet. And here, there is a register map, table 29. So understand how writing this, setting these bits, well, 34 is the address, but setting these bits, uh, what register is this? Register 4, 08H. Register 4, 08H. Like, what is, how does this work, right? How do these bits work? It's all in the data sheet. So look at the register map. Uh, look at the corresponding uh, description, for example, following that. Figure it out, right? You have to understand every aspect of it. You should not leave any stone unturned or you'll be in trouble. All right, so how do you do this uh, in the sense the 10 packets? Were retrieved from ROM, okay? And sent over the two wire interface. Well, sent over the I squared C interface. Doesn't matter, it's a two wire interface, okay? Via and FSM. This is the recommended method of doing the FSM, right? Recommended. Again, you don't have to do it this way, but it's recommended. FSM have six states. Reset, obviously. Start condition. Send data, acknowledge, prepare for stop condition. We'll see why you have two stop condition states.
एंड स्टॉप कंडीशन ओके रीसेट द एफएसएम स्विच्ड to the reset state when the reset button whatever that is usually key zero on the de1 is pressed okay again i'll just describe what the states do then i'll show you examples of what output should be set set i'm sorry via an fsm recommended fsm uh so this is actually i'm going to do more so what's the definition of a more fsm yeah no it's all wrong the outputs depend upon what no the outputs depend upon only the current state that's it mele fsm the outputs depend on both the current state and the input right not good guys you got to remember this right reset the fsm switch to the reset state when the reset button on the de1 is pressed um uh, okay start condition so how do you do the start condition let's look at the data sheet uh, software control device so what's the start condition yeah exactly the clock should be high and the data line should be pulsed high to low so let's just write it out start condition i squared c clock line is held high while the data line is pulled low okay again this is what you should do in the sense you should on a piece of paper write out all these things just do the design on paper first and then start doing vcl okay yeah in the first paragraph prepare for stop condition and stop condition okay so in the send data state so used to send each of the 24 bits of data after sending each of the after sending eight data bits fsm entered the acknowledge state yes so here is the acknowledge the acknowledge state got it here so acknowledge state acknowledge fsm uh set data line to high impedance via the control bit okay this is where you set the control bit to zero is that clear so data line um to high impedance by setting control bit to zero okay so it will open up the tri state buffer since it's high impedance when the control bit is zero the and there is a pull up resistor on the de1 board okay on that line and how do you know there's a pull up resistor on the de1 board well look at the user's manual Right, I don't have it open, but you'll see a pull-up resistor, the I squared JS data line, so it gets pulled high. Okay, so the codec recognizes this, and if you send the data correctly, it'll acknowledge. Okay, by pulling that line low. How do you know a correct acknowledge is low? Well, right here. See the acknowledge is low. okay and then after the so uh, there is a counter and i'll look at the um i'll show you the snippet we shall snippet 
for the FSM, right? You don't want to code it that way. I'm just going to show you the snippet so you have an idea of what's going on, right? And then stop condition. I won't split this up into prepare for stop and stop. That I'll do by the VHDL. Following transmission of the full 24 bit packet. The FSM entered the stop condition, where which is the it's the, the stop condition is the complement of the start condition, where the data line is pulled high while the clock line is held high. Okay. So let's just confirm that. Yeah. So the data line goes from low to high while the clock line is held high. Okay. So that's about it. And then let's look at the VHDL uh, code snip, uh, control A for some snippet. So again, this is incomplete, obviously, okay? Oops. Okay. So down here, here is a VHDL a snippet of I squared C control FSM. I'm not going to give you the full FSM that's for you to design, right? But this should go a long way in helping you do that, hopefully. Uh, hello. Paste. Button copy. Probably activated my keyboard, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me zoom out here. I think I got the full thing. Yep. Okay, ignore the tab alignments. I copied pasted it. So let me zoom out to 75%. All right. So let's see. Okay. All right. Awesome. Okay. So let me zoom out even more 50%. Too much. So hopefully we can see it on one page. Yeah, good enough. All right. Okay, so here is reset. So these are all, this SDA temp, S clock temp are all internal signals, okay? So you gotta figure out like what kind of signals you gotta declare, right? But place both, so this is when you hit reset, okay? Both wires, the temp and the clock line are held high, right? So that, if you look at the picture, is right here, reset. Is that clear? And notice that, mm, mm, let's see. So one of the things which is not obvious here, and I'll write this out, is your I squared, the control line for tri-state buffer should be what? One. Should be... One. Okay, I'm not going to do this as a comment. 
Is that clear? And since this is a more machine, do it appropriately, right? Since you can have another um, of a select a single assignment which says with current state select. Is that clear? It should be one because you are controlling the data line. Yes, you are writing to it. Okay. You and remember that there is the so this is the control. Okay, in the data path, I'll write it here. What do you have in the data path? What are the components? What are the different components in your data path? So for the audio codec controller, you have an I squared C control FSM. What are the different components in the data path? What other components do you have? Yeah, clock divider, 50 kilohertz, right, what else? The ROM, clock divider, uh, so this is for 50 kilohertz, okay. You have the ROM controller, yes. And then you have the ROM itself. Yeah, for example, right. And you can notice, Colin, what he has done is, he has put one of the control FSM outputs, the increment ROM to zero, inside of this um, state here. You can do that, right? Your outputs are a function only of the state. It's a more machine. But the way I like to do is I like to have a separate set of single assignment to do it. Is that clear? You can say with current state, select increment ROM is zero when it's in reset state, right? When reset state, et cetera. So once you let go of the reset, okay? So as long as you hold the reset down, you're in here. And once you let go of the reset, you come here. So notice, he pulls the data line low. So your control line for tri-state buffer should still be one. Is that clear? So you go back up here. The control line is one, the data goes out. You're controlling the data line. Is that clear? So you send, you then immediately go to the send data state and then start counting bits on the next clock cycle. So he has a counter, right, for counting the data bits. So that's another thing he has in the data path. One port ROM, uh, data bit counter. Again, you should know how to write counters by now. You shouldn't struggle with it. If you're struggling with it, well, you'll be in trouble for on your exam next week. So is that clear? Then you get into the send data state. Okay, and we'll talk about what this release clock is shortly. Your control line is still one, so this is from your ROM controller. That's what his data temp is, and then he checks. This is why he has a, he has a data bit counter. He checks if the current data bit is 16 or 8 or 0. Okay, if it is, he goes to the acknowledge state. He disables that counter he's going to wait for the acknowledge, right? So then this is where the control line goes zero. So then you are at the top level, your tri-state buffer opens up. Your codec sees that. And if you did this right, it pulls the data line low, acknowledging that it's gotten the bits. And then he repeats it, OK? Unless the current data bit is 23, it means it's sent out the entire packet is that clear he has sent out one packet or you have sent out one packet make sense or no you acknowledge after this you acknowledge after this oops and you acknowledge well you acknowledge after this okay you acknowledge after that and then you acknowledge after that whoops Okay, and then in your stop state, what he does is this is your stop condition. So he does it in two steps. It's a nice design in the sense you leave one clock cycle for taking control of the data line, okay? And when you take control of the data line, 
you pull the data line low okay because the reason is the reason why you need two states it's a nice design is because whoops here in the acknowledge bit the codec has control of the data line yes that is you have opened up the tri-state buffer so it's a good idea to have an extra clock cycle where you take control of the data line okay and then you pull the data line low and then in the stop condition you actually pull the data line high you see that here the data line is low and you set the control high then in the actual stop condition you pull the data line high is that clear you also had the same two states for the start condition but one of them was the reset state you see that that's your, your reset state is your prep for start but make sense so the rule of thumb is when in doubt add an extra state you're like oh am i going to have um, extra hardware no it's an fpga why do you care right it's very efficient so is this clear the control fsm you have to really sit down and think about it right okay so another tidbit is how do you see either so tidbit number 1 is you have an extra state for processing the start and the stop condition properly the extra state for the start condition is actually your reset state right the extra state for your stop condition is that prep for stop okay number one number two your clock line should either be high or you should send the clock out the 50 kilohertz clock yes how does he do that so there's another trick right here so let me copy this and caution you copy that so this is the VHDL simulation of the uh, I squared C control FSM so let me zoom back in controlling clock line between it's got to be logic high yes in the start and the stop conditions or I squared C clock in our case it's 50 kilohertz here is one method right? and I'll caution you that there's a problem with this method okay so this is what Colin does remember this s clock temp signal This S clock temp signal is what he sets to one here. Okay, so it's either one or it's zero. All right. The actual clock signal that is going to your audio codec is the OR of this temp signal, and this we'll look at this not for a second. We'll examine this not later, but it's either the temp signal or the clock trick yes you'll see one exactly it's a, it's a common trick they play all right you see that yeah this is a trick right these are all yes so that's follow up okay so you have to so to avoid gated clocks okay so note to avoid gated clocks, use a 50 megahertz D flip flop synchronizer. Okay. So the clock signal for the D flip flop is going to be 50 megahertz. But the input, the D input should be this guy. Is that clear? 
Yeah. Because you want to be, you want to make sure that you read this for good question. You want to make sure that the frequency of the D flip flop is high enough so you don't miss the transition edges on the 50 kilohertz, right? So it's like five hertz. That's not going to work. Make sense? Point number one. So that addresses Tim's question. Now you see something very important here is a not here. Okay. The reason you're you doing the you're nodding the internal clock signal from the clock divider is you want your so it's very important. Okay, let me underline also this in red. This not is very, very important. You want your I squared C codec to sense your data half a clock cycle later than when your FSM updates it. Is that clear? You don't want them having race conditions. It's a trick. It's another trick, right? Now, ideally, ideally, you use a PLL to implement half clock cycle delay. When you configure your PLL, we have been configuring it as a buffer, but you can also implement delays, right? The problem is, I think the 50 kilohertz is too low for the PLL to work. Yes? So it's, it doesn't work, right? So you just nod it. That's fine because you're passing it through a synchronizer. Is that clear? These are all tricks. These are, these are all experience you gain by going through the course. Yeah. So is that clear? Yes. Yeah, so after you're done with either the high or your clock. Is that clear? So again, now what you should start doing, we're running out of time, so I'm going to stop here, okay? We have seven minutes, but there's enough. There's a lot of stuff. So now what you should do is, you, you, most of you have your delay counter working. So get your delay counter to work, your clock buffer to work. You should now start thinking about the FSM, okay? To start doing next, do the 50 kilohertz step down clock divider, okay? Do the ROM controller. Get that done. And then you start doing the FSM by tonight. So the ROM controller, um, basically, so let me address that. So here's the ROM controller. The ROM controller, I'll just show you the top level. Let's see. I mean, not, I mean the uh, entity statement, sorry, not the top level. No, the ROM you get from the Mega Wizard. Yep. So every time. Okay, let me just copy this and show it to you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'll show you. Yes, correct. You're just building the storage address space. Yes, correct. Ah, can okay, I should have used the keyboard? Come on. All right. So in the ROM controller, what you have, so, all right, so I have to make this even smaller. Uh, I should have used the keyboard. Sorry? No, you can remember, you can't configure the ROM for four bits. Remember that? The minimum is five. Just the way it is. Here's the ROM controller. Okay. 
Okay, nice. All right, only this is from the Mega Wizard. Okay, what the ROM controller has to answer Connor's question is it's got a counter. Okay, so here is how it instantiate uh, instantiate Mega Wizard ROM. Yes, so this is a counter. So if you look at it, there is an increment signal coming in. Yes, so the increment control comes from your control FSM. Where is your? Where is it? Oh, here. Okay, so it don't increment the ROM, or when you, after you send, so the increment ROM will be one. In which state do you think? Hmm. Which, when do you want to increment the ROM? Uh, you got to be careful. No. Yes. So right here. Correct. That's right. So, great observation. So you have, you send all these data packets, do the stop condition, yes, and then you increment your ROM. Make sense? So each ROM address has one data packet. So in other words, you loop around, send the 24 bits, receive the three acknowledges. Whoops. Wrong loop. So you your FSM loops around here, okay? Service is the 24 plus 3, 27 bits, okay? Preps for stop, then increment ROM address. You see that? Okay? No. So, depends on how, in this case, since Colin is so great point, which Connor said. Remember I told you, the reset state is actually prep for start condition for Colin. Yes. So what Colin does is notice after he increments the ROM, he goes into the reset state because you have to send the start bit again. Yes. If you don't want to do that, you can have reset state prep for start condition, start condition. That's right. Because you start with the first the, I mean, you're going to start with the first, uh, your register zero is at address zero anyway. So it doesn't matter if increment ROM is zero here. Make sense? Is the increment ROM just like a standard, uh, standard logic where it's just a one or a zero? And then yeah, that's right. Keeping track of the count. Here. No, it's not. It's not keeping track of the count. Yeah. So again, there are many ways to do this. What is the big picture? Right, you guys are right, but don't. Now you are getting just. <laughs> now we are getting lost in the details. Don't get lost in the details. Details are important, but first understand the high level how it works. Okay. So we are out of time. So I want to stop here. We'll continue this. Uh